Iran is threatening to destroy Israel and the Jewish people, and they mean to do it. And when they get a nuclear capability to destroy the Jewish people, they will use it even if they know other nations are going to retaliate with nuclear force. Some of the leaders have said, so half of us are murdered or killed. We all go to heaven. For believers watching this show who say, well, you know, Jerusalem, I read about it in my Bible, it's, it's far away. Why does it matter? to every believer. Christians in America really have little comprehension about what the city of Jerusalem means to God. The Bible says Jerusalem is the city, the city of God. The Bible says that God has placed his name there. That's, that's the only city in the world where God has literally written his name. And as you fly over the city of Jerusalem on the side of one of those mountains in perfect stone formation are the Hebrew letters for Jehovah. And God has put his name there. This is the place where Abraham placed his son on the altar and proved to God the God he could not see. Abraham was an idolater. He came out of a pagan society. He was learning to walk by faith and he was getting ready to take the life of his only son, only covenant son, to prove his love for God. This happened on the Temple Mount in the city of Jerusalem. This is the place where King David captured Jerusalem from the Jebusites and made it the capital of Israel. And that happened over 3,000 years ago. I'm very appreciative to the President of the United States for recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. But people who read the Bible know that as a historical fact that has existed from that moment until right now. This is the place where Isaiah and Jeremiah pen the principles of righteousness that became the moral foundations for Western civilization. Jerusalem is the city where Jesus Christ himself rode in on a young donkey and introduced himself as the Messiah of the world. Jerusalem is where he carried his blood spattered cross to the cross where he died for my redemption and for your redemption and for every person watching this telecast. You are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jerusalem is where Jesus Christ outside its city walls was buried in a borrowed tomb. He rose from the dead. He ascended to the Father from the, from the Mount of Olives. Now here's the future. Yeah. In the future, after the tribulation, when Christ comes back to earth, he's going to put his foot on the Mount of Olives with all of the body of Christ following him. This is Revelation talking. And that mountain is going to split in half. And Christ is going to walk through that valley up the Temple Mount into the city of Jerusalem that will come down from the throne of God. He is establishing then a kingdom that shall never end. It is the final kingdom. Therefore, Jerusalem is not just the epicenter of the past, but it is the shoreline of eternity. No other city compares to that. Washington, Rome, Moscow, London, They'll be like a tent at the end of a dirt road when Jesus Christ sets up his eternal kingdom in the city of Jerusalem. If you haven't been to Jerusalem, go. There's a very powerful presence of God in that city. Yeah. Why is, yeah, come on. As, as followers of Jesus, Jerusalem should be important to us because as you just laid out, Pastor, it's so important to God Almighty. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to us. Uh, take it back 3,000 years plus. Uh, Pastor, the Jewish people were in Jerusalem. It was their ancestral, eternal capital. Yet we have some today at the United Nations and elsewhere denying that there was ever any Jewish uh, presence in Jerusalem, in the old city, the Temple Mount, uh, the Western Wall. Uh, why is this such a problem today uh, to have people uh, denying Israel's claim uh, to Jerusalem? This is a dangerous movement we have around the world right now. It's denying been, history. It's been said there are none so blind as those who refuse to see. And they simply refuse to see. As we sit here right now, they are uncovering the city of David in Jerusalem. Every few days, 
they find something in Jerusalem or in Israel that has the name of a Bible prophet or someone who worked in government who sealed official documents. Those uh, implements of archaeology are testimonials yeah. of the veracity of the fact that Jerusalem has always been the heritage of the Jewish people and only the Jewish people. Yeah. Today, yesterday, tomorrow, and forever, yeah. Jerusalem belongs to the Jewish people. Yeah, unfortunately today, common sense is not so common, it appears, Pastor, when it comes to Jerusalem. On our Christians United for Israel Watchmen show here on TBN, folks, we go to these very sites that Pastor Hagee's talking about, and when you combine rock-solid archaeological evidence, Pastor, with the Bible, to me, you have an unbeatable combination there. You know, on our way over to the studio, you were talking about how nations will be judged uh, on how they have treated Israel. Absolutely. That, that's very, very important. Can you talk more about that? Absolutely. Whenever, <clears throat> let, let's take it, let's say the rapture happens right now. The bride of Christ goes to heaven. We will all go through the judgment seat of Christ where we are judged for our lives. It's not if you're going to heaven or not, you're already there. But the quality of your Christian life is going to be measured you will be given one of five different kinds of crowns. I write this in the latest book that I have just written. And those crowns will tell you what you have done on this earth. The soul winner's crown, the elder's crown, the victor's crown, the crown of life. These crowns you will have. And then the robe of righteousness, which is the robe that is the reflection of your righteous acts on the earth. That's a direct quote from the Bible. We will be there for seven years now going through the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we're going to come back to earth. And there, when Jesus Christ comes back after the tribulation, he is going to have a period of time where he does first judges the nations. It's called the judgment of the nations. And the basis of this judgment is how did you treat the Jewish people? And how did you treat the nation of Israel? And Jesus said, in as much as you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren. He's talking about the Jewish people, not, not Gentiles. Jesus never called a Gentile his brother before the cross. Before the cross, we were pagans. We were, as Paul said, outside the covenants of Israel, without God and without hope. But he said, when this moment comes, I'm going to judge these nations based on how they have treated the Jewish people. And those who have abused the Jewish people, he says, will be cast into eternal torment. And those who have blessed the Jewish people will be invited to enter into the millennial kingdom. There is a fact from Genesis 12 to the last dot and tittle of the, uh, of the book of Revelation, that the person, the nation, the church that blesses Israel, God will bless. And those who do not bless Israel or the Jewish people do not nearly as prosper as those who do. Yeah, and uh, Pastor, as you've said many times, history bears that out. Uh, at Kufi, Christians United for Israel, I'd say we are a Genesis 12-3 organization. We truly believe that God blesses those who bless Israel, curse those who curse Israel. Pastor, as you've so eloquently laid out time and time again, Haman, the Nazis, the Philistines, the Romans, the Greeks, all abused Israel and the Jewish people. Where are they today? They're in the ash heap of history. Uh, but Israel survives, thrives against all odds. One of those nations today, Pastor, uh, that is really coming against Israel and the Jewish people is Iran, that right. Iranian regime. Uh, the U.S. just pulled out of that Iran nuclear deal. Why is that so important? Three miraculous things have happened in just rapid fire. The president recognized Jerusalem. The president moved the embassy there. The president withdrew from the Iranian nuclear deal. As quickly as they could, they were building the nuclear capability to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Believe it. Believe it, believe it. Iran fully intended to build a nuclear weapon. And so with that money, they were going to be able to 
murder the Jewish people with America's money and then intimidate America to do the will of Iran because we, the American people, were dumb enough to give those people $150 billion. Fortunately, President Donald Trump showed up and said, that's stupid. We're not doing that. We're backing out of this deal and we're going home and taking our money. And they have pulled the economic wheels off of that engine because of America's strength. The banking, banking industry and the energy industries of the world are supporting us. And now Iran is scrambling. They don't have the nuclear option yeah. that they had. Yeah, these are major earth shattering events, Pastor, as you said. And when it comes to Iran, and their destructive role in the Middle East and in the world right now, you and I, just 24 hours after an Iranian missile barrage against Israel, we stood on the Golan Heights on Israel's border with Syria, and we talked about it. Again, less than 24 hours, folks, uh, before we were standing there, Iran had fired some 32 missiles from Syria into Israeli territory. Pastor Hagee and I stood in the very spot where it happened, and we talked about it. Take a look. The American people need to know that the head of the snake in the Middle East is Iran. Iran sponsors, trains, and equips Hamas and Hezbollah. Those are two very large terrorist organizations that are on the border of the state of Israel. And so when Americans hear Hamas and Hezbollah, the issue in the Middle East is Iran, and our president has done a great thing in helping Israel by nixing that nuclear deal. It's very, very advantageous for Israel because Iran fully intends to destroy Israel. When you have thousands of citizens in the streets chanting month after month, year after year, death to the Jews, that's what they intend to do. And death to America. Absolutely. When someone in history threatens to kill you, you need to pay attention. Yeah. Whenever Hitler said that he was going to destroy the Jews, people said, well, he's just having a bad day. But that didn't prove to be true. Iran is threatening to destroy Israel and the Jewish people, and they mean to do it. And when they get a nuclear capability to destroy the Jewish people, they will use it even if they know other nations are going to retaliate with nuclear force. Some of the leaders have said, so half of us are murdered or killed. We all go to heaven. That's their idea. Folks, that's powerful stuff. You know, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You need to know this crucial information. If you are just joining us, we're here tonight with Pastor John Hagee, founder and chairman of Christians United for Israel. We're talking about Jerusalem, uh, Iran, the Middle East, and why it all matters to you. Pastor, we just saw that clip of us on the Israel-Syria border on the Watchman Show. Uh, when I think of Iran, I think of Iran's proxies. Hamas, Hezbollah, they've encircled Israel. Tell us what they're up to. It's important for people to understand that, that Hamas is a m massive terrorist group on the borders of Israel. They're not a long way. They're on the borders of Israel. And Hezbollah is on the border of Israel. Hezbollah, I have been told by an, Il an Israeli military officer that they have 90,000 troops who are world-class uh, capable of fighting and that they have 150,000 rockets that they can launch into Israel. Over here in Gaza is Hamas. Hamas is a major terrorist organization. Yeah. Both of these two terrorist organizations are capable of starting a war with Israel yeah. at Iran's request because they are the two armies that Iran has trained, equipped, and funded to be an eternal threat to the Jewish people. So while we have destroyed Iran's nuclear capability, yeah. right on the border of Israel are these two massive terrorist organizations who have a covenant that's written to destroy Israel and the Jewish people. Yeah. This is a problem that Israel is going to have to solve in the immediate future. 
they're going to have to resolve what they do in Gaza and what they do with uh, Hezbollah that's in Lebanon because they are very definitely a threat to the security of the state of Israel. Yeah, Pastor, this is such important information. Let me ask our audience here, are you learning right now? Are you learning some, some very important information? Is this is making more sense to you. This is so important. <laughs> Folks, this is really happening today in real time before our very eyes. Bible times, thankfully, the God of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Pastor, 2018 is such an important year prophetically. Yes. This is the 70 year anniversary of Israel's miraculous rebirth as a nation. 70 years, Israel founded in 1948, recognized by President Harry Truman. Why is this year, number 70, so significant? 70 in the Bible is a very significant number. Uh, the Bible, it really, in fact, the mathematics of the scripture is just mind-boggling when you begin to uh, understand that every Hebrew letter has a numerical value and some, some mathematical messages of a Bible verse are just as clear and just as powerful as the text itself. But concerning the 70th year, seven is a prime number in the Bible. It's the number of perfection. Seven times seven is 49. And in the 49th year in Israel, it ends in the 50th year, which is Jubilee. So 50 years becomes the year of total blessing. If you lived in Israel in the 50th year, no one worked. You had a one year holiday. You lived off of the crops you grew in the sixth year that God prospered. This is biblical Israel. Biblical. It's in the Bible. Yeah. All I'm telling you is, is not a pipe dream that I dreamed up while I walked up <laughs> on the stage. It's in the Bible. Amen. And uh, all slaves were released. All indentured servants were released. It was a time of joy. It was a time of celebration. It was a time of blessing. And it's called the year of Jubilee. So you put the year of Jubilee as God's prophetic clock for Israel. And that prophetic clock only runs when Israel is in the land of Israel. So when the Romans took them out in 70 AD, the clock stopped running. When the Jewish people came back in 1917 because the British gave to them the Balfour Amendment. Right. Now the clock starts running. 1917 was a jubilee year. Right. Add 50 to 1917 and you have 1967. That was the six day war yeah. when Israel reclaimed the city of Jerusalem. They recaptured Jerusalem. And then they doubled the size of Israel geographically. It was a time when two weeks before that war, the nations of the world were saying Israel is going to be wiped off the earth. Yes. 10 days after that war, the Russians were trying to get Americans to stop the Jewish people because they were being so successful. Uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson did not help uh, the, the Jewish people. Yeah. Uh, but th the point I'm making is in 1967, that was a jubilee year. Out of disaster came tremendous blessing. Yeah. 50 years on to 1967, 50 years on to 1967 is 2017. That's this year or was last year. Yeah. This was the year that I went to the president and asked him if he would name Jerusalem as the capital and yeah. in his Please tell us more about that, Pastor. You had a, a personal meeting with President Donald Trump where you had the opportunity at the White House to personally lobby him, I guess you would say, to move the embassy to Jerusalem. That's fascinating stuff. Tell us more about that. Well, the truth is I was invited to have supper with him. <laughs> and it lasted two hours. And I sat down and talked to him just like I'm talking to you. And actually, I took the Bible and read to him uh, the Leviticus story of the year of Jubilee. And he listened very intently. And uh, I told him, I said, Mr. President, you are exactly at the point in history where Harry Truman was in 1948. I said, in 1948, Israel became a state. 
and, uh, and uh, Harry Truman, uh, his leadership told him, don't you dare recognize Israel or it will start a war in the Middle East that will never stop. And we're going to have all kinds of trouble with the Arabs and oil and yada, 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 yada. All that song <laughs> and dance that we've heard forever. Harry Truman in 11 minutes recognized Israel and later apologized for taking so long. I said, Harry Truman has stepped into political immortality in Israel. And I said, I know your advisors are advising you not to do this, but I'm telling you that if you will, you will step into political immortality in Israel. And he listened very intently. We finished the meal and we stood up and he pointed his finger, forefinger at me like this and he said, other presidents have failed you, but I will not fail you. Weeks later, he announced Jerusalem to be the capital of Israel and brother, it shook the foundations of the nations. He did what five presidents didn't have the courage to do. Wow. And, and now the embassy, the U.S. embassy is in Jerusalem where it belongs. So significant, I think, Pastor, for the United States, the leader of the free world, to actually lead on this issue and move our embassy first. Now other nations are following suit. Hopefully it continues. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions in comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.